Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, to you these words are for your glory and for the welfare of your people, that together we may grow deeper in faith and trust, for you are our living God. Amen. Being this is my last sermon at celebration, my parting words, you might say, I couldn't help but think of an Ole and Lena story and the one about Ole's parting words to Lena. Maybe you've heard it. Ole is on his deathbed, and he calls over his beloved wife, Lena, and he says, Lena, ya Ole, Lena, remember when we were coming over on the boat from the old country just after we were married, and we had those terrible storms at sea, and we lost everything, all our worldly possessions. Ya Ole, I remember, I remember. But... Lena, there you were, right by my side, right there with me. Ya all the ifas. And Lena, remember when we sent both the boys off to war, but only one came back. Ya all the. But Lena, there you were, right by my side, right there with me. Ya all the ifas. And Lena, remember when we had those terrible weather, no rain, no crops, eight, nine years in a row, nothing. Yeah, Oli. But Lena, you were right there with me, right by my side. And now here I am dying, and I'm on my last breath, and here you are again, right by my side. Well, Lena, there's only one more thing I have to say to you. Yeah, Oli, what's that? Lena, you're bad luck. <laughs> well, those might have been all these words to Lena, parting words, but those are not my parting words <laughs> to you today. My parting words, my sermon today can only begin with thank you. Thank you. For 25 and a half years of ministry, for being such a wonderful place to do ministry, and for your faithful partnership in the gospel of Jesus Christ. How does one even begin to preach one's final sermon? How does one even try to capture 25 and a half years of ministry? I don't know. I've been wrestling with that the last couple of weeks. But I do know that today's psalm, Psalm 27, helps me out. Psalms are about life. They're about all the many and mixed and varied emotions and experiences we have in life. And they are so important. Martin Luther wrote the book of Psalms might well be called a little Bible. In it is comprehended most beautifully everything that's in the entire Bible. Here in the book of Psalms. So important. If you're visiting today, we are in our summer, first summer series, preaching series on the Psalms. This is the third of four weeks. And we've been learning that the Psalms come in many different flavors, thanksgiving, praise, laments, trust. Two Sundays ago, Psalm 113, a psalm of praise. Last Sunday, a lament psalm, Psalm 69, how we can be brutally honest with God. And I love the praise psalms. I absolutely love the lament psalms. But I couldn't be happier with today's psalm assigned for today, Psalm 27. It is a beautiful, beautiful psalm of trust. I mean, is there anything better than Psalm 27, verse 1? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? That beautiful psalm of trust is about what really matters in life. When my mother received the tough diagnosis of pancreatic cancer in the fall of 2004, she had to come down to the University of Minnesota for surgery, not to remove the tumor. They couldn't. It was so large. 
but it was a diversion surgery to bypass it. And my sister Carolyn and I were with her, and she was just about to be wheeled off to go to surgery. And it is this psalm, this psalm, that my mother began reciting just before surgery. The Lord, no Bible, of course, just began reciting, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I mean, it was the perfect time to recite that psalm. Pancreatic cancer is something that is a real threat in life. But you see, that psalm gave voice to my mother's hope of where we place our trust in our God of life, who is our stronghold now and in the world to come. My mother had that surgery, but only four and a half months later, she died. Pancreatic cancer took her life. But at her funeral, we sang the songs of faith that had sustained her, and we commended her to God, our Lord of resurrecting light and salvation, the stronghold of our life. This song is a beautiful song of trust. And I love that this, the, the writer of this psalm is not looking at life through rose-colored glasses. No, there are real dangers. There are real threats in this life, real things to be fearful of. Have you ever seen this painting? It's by Norwegian artist Edvard Munch. 1893, Edvard Munch painted The Scream. It hangs in the National Gallery in Oslo, Norway. Many years ago when I traveled there, I saw it. It's become kind of an iconic symbol of human anxiety. You know, there are real things to scream about in life. There are real fears and threats and anxieties, whether that's disease, or distress, uncertainty of the future, broken relationships, or the brokenness of this world, they are real. But Psalm 27 tells us that there's another reality as well. There's the reality of placing our lives into the care of our loving God. And this psalm invites us, really causes us to ask, where will we be anchored in life? In fear or in trust? In anxiety or in faith? Where will we be anchored? And this psalm calls us to trust in the one who is entirely trustworthy, that amidst our fear, our anxieties, we're called to place our trust in the living God, to entrust our lives, our fears, to entrust the future to God who provides, who is our light and our salvation, the stronghold of our life. Beautiful psalm of trust. People have asked, well, how could you stay in a, the same congregation for so long? Well, many reasons. The celebration is just a great place to do ministry. But I also remember years ago reading a really tiny book written by Will Willimon. And Will Willimon is uh, out of the Methodist Church, bishop, a great preacher out of the Methodist Church. And he wrote a little book. The title of it went something like, How Not to Burn Out as a Pastor. And I thought, well, I'm going to read that one. <laughs> And I don't think I was feeling particularly burned out at the time, but I picked it up and I read it. And I remember one thing from that book. That Willman said, here's your job as a pastor, your calling, to turn people's lives to the living God. That's it. To continually turn people's lives again and again to the living Lord. And I thought, that's good. And by God's spirit, God's help, I've tried to do that. But that's what this psalm also is saying today. 
that we're called to turn our lives again, to trust, to fall back into those arms of God who is with you, who is for us in love and grace, who is our light and our salvation, the stronghold of our life. Psalm 27 is just a beautiful song of trust. And today I also want to say thank you. Thank you for placing your trust in me as one of your pastors for 25 and a half years. Trust is the bedrock of all healthy relationships with God and with one another. And trust is what makes healthy ministry happen. So thank you. It has truly been such a humble privilege to walk with you and, 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 and enter into your lives at the times of greatest joy and celebration. We were just talking with, about a wedding before I came in today. And also in the times of deepest sorrow and pain and loss. It is an incredible calling to be a pastor. I've told other people, you know, we can go to the hospital and do hospital visits. In one room, you might be holding a newborn infant. Right, Pastor Jeff? Saying a prayer, a blessing of this new life. And in the next room, you may go and be praying a prayer of commendation over someone on their last breaths. It is such a huge privilege. Thank you. And we've all grown a little older together in 25 and a half years. <laughs> Here's a picture of uh, when we were ordained. Uh, Pastor Larry and I joined Pastor Tom Wright. Uh, here's Pastor Olson on the left. He, or he installed. Pastor Larry and I started together at Celebration. I was 70% time of the call. He was 35%. And uh, uh, just a few, within a few months, Larry jumped the river and uh, <laughs> became mission developer at Living Waters. And I upped my percentage a little bit. And here's what we look like. Here's our boys on that same day. February 6th. 1994, our boys were fourth grade and first, Dan fourth grade, Nathan in first grade. And thank you for loving and teaching them, nurturing them in the faith as they grew. Such a privilege and such an adventure. I mean, from uh, Larry and I were in charge, of course, at the beginning of all the youth activities. And so from uh, the very first youth event, it has been an adventure. The very first youth event, it was winter. We decided to take the kids uh, to sl go sliding on the hill on 12th Street. Well, we were kind of new to town. We didn't know how 12th Street can be a little dangerous. <laughs> and uh, so um, we, it was a Sunday afternoon. We're sliding, uh, winter sliding in February. The kids did great, but Larry, on coming down the hill uh, on an inner tube, uh, hit a sharp chunk of ice. And it pushed up into his back so hard, and it was so painful, it caused him to black out and faint. He went unconscious, so he's unconscious at the bottom of the hill. Cliff Teigland, one of our adult leaders, who had just finished CPR training that two days before, rushes over and begins to administer mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <laughs> Larry wakes up, Cliff, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> Somebody has called the ambulance, and Larry is now hauled off in the ambulance to the St. Cloud Hospital. You know, when ministry starts that way, you know it's going to be an adventure. <laughs> and it has been. And thank you for that adventure, for bearing the light of Christ to my family and me, through all the joys and sorrows in these past 25 and a half years, and especially through the deepest of our sorrows and pain in the death of our beloved son, Daniel. It's hard for me even to say those words. But thank you. Your love and support and prayers and remembrances and gifts, the food train that went on for weeks, all such a reflection of the love of, of Jesus Christ, isn't it? For one another and for this world. 
And so I say to you today, carry on celebration as our mission statement says, celebrating, growing, and serving. Celebrating as we have called to lives of active and, and faithful worship and growing. Here's a mentor night. Growing as faithful disciples. Here's VBS. And then serving. Here's one of our many food packs locally. And we always say this. We, we serve locally and globally. Always a both and. Here's our adult mission trip to the Dominican. You know, lots of times I, I like to, uh, and especially in wedding homilies, I like to have a, a uh, object. And I thought, well, what could I use for an object today? Pastor Jeff, you want to help me there? You bet. And I thought, an anchor. <laughs> because this psalm today, this is kind of heavy. <laughs> I got to do a little, uh, a little more weightlifting in retirement. <laughs> but the psalm today invites us: Where will we be anchored? In fear, or in faith? In anxiety or trust? And we're called again to know that this Lord is with us and for us, who has been guiding us for these past years and will continue to guide celebration in so many awesome years ahead. This Lord who took on flesh and as the gospel writer says, let the light shine in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. That's our Lord who is shining on us today and who sends us out of here today to shine with the love of Jesus for the world celebration. I say thank you. My parting words are not like Ole's, <laughs> but thank you and carry on and come and follow in even deeper ways. Be anchored in the light of the world in Jesus Christ. And if you would please say with me one more time this Psalm 27 verse 1. Let's say it together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? A beautiful song of trust. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.